Set up a simulation study. In this video, we'll set up a simulation study, we'll verify loads and constraints, and we'll generate a mesh. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our generative frame outcome one. One of the benefits of exporting a 3D design from a generative design outcome is that it brings along all the information that was used in the setup for a simulation. So if we navigate from the design workspace to simulation, Note that we get a prompt that says, design was created with generative design. Do you want to use this setup information? And we're going to say yes. This streamlines the process of setting up a new simulation study. However, there are some important things that we need to understand. First, we want to go into simplify, and we're going to take a look at our model components, expand the bodies, and note that we're really only focusing on body 23, which is our frame. We're going to right click and select remove all except selected. The Edit Model workspace in Generative Design and the Simplify workspace in Simulation are very similar in the fact that they only affect geometry that is directly inside of, in this case, a simulation study or a generative design study. Removing those obstacles inside of the simulation has no effect on the design whatsoever. But now at this point, we want to take a look at all the information that has come from generative design. You can see that we have our load cases. It says load case one, this was our static load case. Let's double check this by expanding it and activating it and noting that we have our force on the bottom of the steering stem and then the bearing load that we applied at the top of our shock. If we take a look at our torsion load, we should see that we've got loads to the left and the right on the steering stem and we still have our shock load at the back. And then torsion two would be the flip of that and braking would be forward and backward on the steering stem. So the inclusion of all these different load cases is extremely important. Next, if we take a look at study materials, notice that the aluminum material, which was used on the final outcome, is what's brought in and already set up inside of the simulation. We can, of course, make adjustments to this by going to study materials and changing it. But in this case, that base aluminum is what we want to use since those mechanical properties were used in the creation of our generative study. Next, we can take a look at some of the other information that might be important to a simulation study. Noting that we already have our materials and our loads and constraints, the next thing that we want to do is we want to generate a mesh. While this isn't strictly required before creating a simulation study, it is helpful as this is usually the area where these form bodies will produce problems when creating meshes. So we'll right click and select generate mesh and we'll do that based on the default settings. So we can see here that a mesh was generated successfully. And this is great news because this means that we don't have to make any adjustments to the geometry. Now, it is important to note that the geometry that we're looking at has not been modified with the exception of changing the obstacles. We haven't cut the obstacles away. So this body is exactly as it was produced as a mesh body in the generative design study. Now that we have those results, this means that our study is likely ready to solve. We can double check that by going to pre-check and seeing that it has all the required information. If you want to make any adjustments to the mesh resolution, now would be the great time to do that. It can be done by right clicking on the mesh and taking a look at the general mesh settings. The average element size right now is fairly large, 10% of the model size, but we can also scale that down. It is important to note that we are dealing with a fairly complex shape, which will take a considerable amount of time to solve in most cases. So reducing those mesh elements is going to increase that calculation time. There are also advanced settings that we can change, but currently by default, it's using a parabolic element and it's using the curved mesh elements, which is going to be the ideal option because we have so many rounded or curved edges. Another thing that we can consider is going to manage and using local mesh control. Local mesh control will allow us to increase or decrease the mesh resolution in areas of interest. So if we take a look at the mesh, if we are concerned about this area here where this strut comes down into this larger body, we could decrease the mesh element size in just this area and potentially get better results. The last thing of note is that we are able to export the study to ANSYS and carry along that setup information as well. We're going to be doing all of our solve and information directly in Fusion 360, but just note that that export is an option. 
From here, we wanna make sure that we do save this before we do anything else, and then we can carry on in the next video.